screenshot. Screenshot. Get to socks. <laughs> My name is Amanda and welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Ace Creates and here I have another podcast for you. Um, today we're going to talk about one finished object and a couple of whips and a couple of upcoming plans uh, for the next uh, few weeks. So let's get into the video. First thing we're going to talk about is this lovely piece this beautiful tank top. This is the Double Take Tunisian Tank by Kayla Woods, K Crochet on Instagram. This is a Tunisian crochet tank top. Um, it is constructed with two panels, a front panel and a back panel. Um, it is got a beautiful kind of modest design here, not too much revealing here, but it's got a beautiful keyhole design in the back and I'll put some pictures so that you can see the keyhole design in the back with the cute little button. Um, like I said, it's a Tunisian crochet tank top. It's done with uh, regular crochet ribbing um, at the bottom hem um, and then basically simple stitch throughout um, with some finishing detail along the armholes and the neck hole and the keyhole on the back. So the yarn that I used for this project is Sorella Yarn Silk DK in the colorway Monterey, which is from the Tony Lipsy collection from 2023. There's 231 yards in a skein. I had four skeins. Um, I ended up using just over um, three full skeins. So I ended up using about 708 yards and I had 216 yards left. So about 90-ish or so grams left in my fourth and final skein, um, which to be honest, I didn't swatch. So I probably would have used more yarn, but I didn't swatch. Um, I just kind of started and then checked my gauge um, once I got started. The pattern calls for a 16 stitch by 16 row gauge. I was pretty close. Um, sometimes I measure about 15 and a half by 15 and a half, um, 15 by 15, just depending on, I've worn it a couple of times and I just measured the gauge. So, um, but it was pretty close, um, but I did have uh, some, I didn't need gauge, but pretty close enough for me. I made size extra large in the pattern, um, which was for a 45 inch bust, which is what my bust measures at. The final measurement of the, the piece in the pattern is supposed to be 46 inches, which means about one inch of positive ease for the extra large. Um, my final width uh, ended up being just on spot so even though I didn't meet gauge I ended up meeting the right width um, which was 46 inches but my length is a little bit longer so my row gauge was off a little bit which is fine um, I actually ended up being um, about 20 and a half inches compared to the 17 and a half inches it called for in the pattern which is fine for me um, I did follow the pattern completely in terms of the number of stitches um, I just did it based on measurement because that's what the pattern called, but I didn't need to um, change add rows or anything like that. Um, but I did end up, once it was blocked, I did end up with a longer piece. I suspect that was also the yarn choice that I had. Um, it helped kind of elongate the piece. That was great for me because although it's designed to be a cropped piece, which it is on me, I didn't want it to be too cropped. So I'm really happy with the final result. This pattern is a extremely beginner friendly pattern. So if you're looking for a pattern to start your first Tunisian crochet garment, I would highly recommend this pattern. Um, if you can do the Tunisian simple stitch, you can do this. Um, you only need to really know how to do that along with some slip stitching. Um, 
I can't recall. I don't think there were any other um, Tunisian stitches in the pattern, um, but it's super beginner friendly. Um, and so I would definitely give this a shot if you're looking for a quick summer project um, to add to your wardrobe. I will say my only kind of constructive criticism is that depending on your kind of a bra down here, the armhole can show your bra off. And I have some bras that will show and some that won't. And that was kind of when I was kind of piecing this together and trying it on before I had like finished blocking it and finish like seaming it all together. I was really concerned about it, but it really just depends on the day and the bra that I'm wearing. I'm currently wearing a sports bra right now and you can't really see it. So it really just depends on, on kind of your bra and how this works for you. I suspect just with a larger chest, you just might have to make this into, take this into consideration um, where you might see some of your bra showing in the uh, final kind of finished piece. So that's my only kind of constructive criticism. It probably would have just meant is perhaps another row or two or, or taking out a row or two of uh, the armhole decreases. Uh, I'm not a garment designer, so I don't know quite what it would have taken, but I perhaps could have modified it just a touch because it's a personal preference of mine. But overall, I really did love this pattern. I loved the yarn and working up the yarn. Silk DK, fabulous yarn from Sorella. I love this, the 50-50 blend. Um, it's really great working up. I had no splitting issues um, with the yarn and with my Tunisian crochet hooks, I tend to have some splitting issues with some yarns, um, but the Silk DK kind of held up really well. Give this pattern a shot if you're looking for an easy Tunisian crochet pattern. Um, I ended up whipping this up in about a month's time. I started it on April 27th and I finished it on May 23rd. Again, I could have finished it a lot faster had it been the only project I was working on. Um, it really flew by pretty fast. Um, the seaming was really easy. Um, you only have to seam at the top and then you seam along the, the sides. Um, I really liked the seaming choices that she chose for the pattern. I thought it really complemented the sides really well. The one thing I will find, and I, I'm finding this in a couple projects where I'm using hand dyed yarn and I have to alternate skeins because, and I did alternate skeins in most places here. Um, I did it throughout the bulk of the body up until about uh, the bust line on each panel. And then I just did one yarn. Um, I feel like with the Sorella, I can't tell the difference in that, but it was just a precautionary measure. But what I did notice is on the kind of um, the right hand side of the Tunisian crochet, where you start, where you have the, your one loop, um, when you're alternating yarns every other row, uh, my tension tends to be a lot tighter on that side than on the left-hand side where I'm starting my return pass. And so when I'm seaming the panels together, I have to really make sure that I'm almost counting stitches. Like this is the first stitch on the right hand or on the front panel, and this is the first stitch on the back panel so that I'm really going into the right stitches. Otherwise I can get, it can be a little like wonky and not, uh, symmetrical in um, where in the seams causing some issues. So that's just one thing I'm learning with Tunisian crochet is that I tend to be a lot tighter when I'm alternating skeins on the forward pass on the right hand side than I do on the return pass on the left hand side. And so I've been trying to like be more mindful about that side and being a little bit looser. Normally you want that first stitch to be tight, um, but it's it's almost a completely different um, uh, gauge on that right hand side from when if I were to do one yarn versus two yarns. Even, even up here when I just had the one yarn, 
it's a completely different gauge, but I'm not seaming, you know, this stuff together um, with the back panel. So just keep that in mind when you're working with hand dyed yarn and you're alternating skeins um, that your tension might change. And so you just want to make sure you line up your panels correctly when seaming them together. So this is the double take Tunisian tank from Kayla Woods. And this is my finished object of the video. This is also my ninth finished object of the year. So let's talk about my works in progress next. So my first finished object for you is the full fade shawl, which is a pattern test for Jen Lovett. It's coming out later this June. I will have a full podcast with it being the featured finished object in the next few weeks once the release date has been set. It had originally been scheduled to be released on June 13th, but it's being delayed a little bit and I'm almost finished. So we're almost at the finish line. In fact, I only have this much to go and about eight or nine rows left to go. So I should be able to knock it out later today. Um, so our next podcast, I'll do the full details, gauge, all of that. But I thought I'd show you where I'm at. So it's Jen Lovett uh, at violet.loops on Instagram. Um, and it is a boomerang shawl. And this is where I'm at. It's going to be really hard to show in the pattern because it's A, so big up here and I don't have a long enough cord that I have it on. I do have long enough cords. I just am lazy. Um, but it's a faded uh, shawl. And there's several different fade options. I chose a traditional fade and a three skein fade. And I'm using Montana Crochet Nylon Sock, which has about 437 yards in a skein. And I'm using three yarns that were designed to be faded together. Um, they're the colorways Gallatin, Jefferson, and Madison. I don't remember which one's which. Uh, I will definitely put them up on the screen. Uh, but uh, we have a lighter blue, a mid-tone blue, and then whoop, this darker, this darker blue. Variegated, very variegated. I feel like the second and third colors uh, really blend well together. The lighter blue uh, has a lot more contrast to it. It's a lot lighter. Um, and I feel like it almost looks like a very harsh line between the first and second color compared to uh, the second and third color. Because this is right about here where I transition completely. So I did the traditional uh, fade, which brings in a couple of rows to start and I'm just slowly building up one row of the second color and then slowly fading out so that I finish up that first color and then it repeats the process later on between the second and third. Um, I cast this on on May 10th, um, so it'll be just uh, about a month again for this project to be completed um, if I finish it today. She also provides def several different fade options. So you can do a traditional three skein fade, you can do a mini skein fade, you can do an alternating fade. There's definitely a lot of different options depending on kind of what yarn you have in your stash. I think this could be a great stash buster. Like I said, it's a boomerang shawl. Um, so this is going to be a heck of a shawl to, uh, block. So I'm really excited to get this, uh, off. It's super beginner friendly. Um, if you can do the full stitch, even if you can't, and you want to learn to do the full stitch, it's a great project to do that on. Um, there's only a few Tunisian stitches on it. Most of it is the full stitch. You do some knit stitch, you do a last Tunisian stitch. Pretty much that's it. And uh, it's a beautiful pattern. It is mindless. So if you want something super easy to do uh, while you're watching TV or, you know, having your kiddos play in the background, um, this is definitely the project for you. I have found for me personally uh, right now, it's not as engaging as I would like it to be. I imagine it's like 
folks that are knitters who are doing stockinette and they get bored from the monot monotonous tone that is stockinette and so I'm feeling the same way so I'm like really eager to get this cast off so I'm trying to power through today to finish this and get this on the blocking mat get some pictures taken and uh and get it get it done so that I can cast on something uh new and different for uh my next project so and this is also probably my last shawl for a long while. Um, so yes, that's the full fade shawl from Jen Lovett in testing. I will have all the links on my social when it goes live. I will also plan to have a podcast episode go live when it's planned to go live. Um, and so it'll be a really great finished object. My next work in progress is the August Tank by Ashley Revis, Tiny Couch Crochet on Instagram. And I've gotten really far since the last time we checked in. I've actually finished the first panel. And I've left some yarn at the straps to, in case I need to lengthen them. Um, but right now I followed this pattern completely to pattern. Um, I'm using the um, Long Dog Yarn uh, Merino DK, 100% Superwash Merino Wool. There's 250 yards in, and it's the colorway The Battle of Helm's Deep. It's this gorgeous variegated blue um, with like small kind of pops of kind of teal green. Um, I am loving this tank. Uh, I started, I cast this on maybe May 20th or so. So we're about two to three weeks in. Um, I actually did quite a bit of the body before the decreasing. And then um, I got to the, like right about here decreasing. And then it calls for a specific, like this is a normal decrease right here. And then it calls for specific decreasing here. And I did about 10 rows of it and had to pull out because I was one stitch short and I actually ended up having to just basically go back to the point where I had to start that new decrease pattern. And um, I kind of set the project aside for several days because I was like, nope, it needs a timeout right now. I was really frustrated. Um, and that's your lesson learned always count your stitches in Tunisian crochet. Like I, especially when you're decreasing or increasing or anything like that, or the pattern changes, because I was able to not count my stitches for the bulk of the pattern where I was just not increasing and decreasing. I was just doing like however many rows of this uh, knit purl pattern. Um, and then I started getting into the decreases and or the special decreases and it just brain could not compute or I missed it and I couldn't see it um, so I was basically pulling out line by line and counting to double check like oh is it this row where the stitch count got off um, so I have uh, to make basically another panel so it's it's a two it's a two panel Tunisian crochet tank top where you seam it together at the, the, the straps and along the side here, um, this is where I'm also having the same, I'm alternating skeins. So I used just about two, almost two full skeins for this. So I would say that I'm gonna hit this project right on, I'm gonna have some left but um, barely uh, any left, um, maybe 30% of a skein or so, um, because I did do a swatch on this one. I did hit gauge on the swatch. I'm really excited to get this in the blocking mat. I'm probably going to block this first uh, two pattern size um, and go from there. So I don't know if I probably won't have this done by the time we check in because I'm trying to keep to like an every other week podcast episode, 
but certainly it'll be the first finished object after the full fade. I'm trying to stay, stick to kind of like one finished object a podcast just to spread them out and give my sign myself time to work on them throughout because I do like to work on several projects at once um, and that way we always have something to talk about here on the podcast so I'm really excited I had a friend I went to a stitch uh, met up with a, a friend to stitch for a little bit and she's like oh wool in the summer and I'm like yeah but I think it'll it'll turn out well it's a tank top so and um, I think it'll turn out well so I'm happy with it um and yeah I have two more skeins of this so just I will be wind winding that up this week probably because I have to wind up a bunch of yarn this week so I'll be winding that up it's on my to-do list this week so that is the August Tunisian tank by Ashley Rivas tiny couch crochet this is how much yarn I have left of that first skein. I haven't weighed it, but it's probably like 15 or 20, 20 grams. And I, I have the yarn for the strap. Like I put extra on the straps. My last work in project for the video is the Adult Playdate Tea by Callie Reedy. Um, it is a top-down knitted tee. Um, and I am using the yarn, uh, Yarn Nouveau, Yak DK base in the colorway Lydia. I have four skeins of this. I should have enough for the top. Um, and it's a top-down raglan tee. And, oh, where's my beginning of brown marker? <laughs> there it is. Okay. So I am well on my raglan decrease yoke section. This yarn honestly is a dream to work up. Um, it's very, so, so this will be my second knitted garment. Um, I wanted to do a tee. My first knitted garment was the Lento um, and I wanted to do a tee but wasn't too dissimilar to the construction of the Lento. Um, and I searched on Ravelry for several things and I came across this. It has a cute, um, eyelet, uh, detail for the, um, raglan decreases or increases. Raglan increases, not decreases, guys. Raglan increases, eyelet, uh, pattern um and I'm about mm, maybe halfway through the raglan increases um I just knocked out three or four rows last night it does take me a, quite a while to stitch because uh I am a rower um English style knitting I think and so um it's just it's a process and so um, I did the German short rows. So it's constructed with German short rows in the back for several rows, um, before you come back and start working in the round. Um, I will say that, um, I made this yoke part, uh, the ribbing part twice. I actually did a much better job the first time, but I messed up my German short rows. I dropped a stitch or did something I couldn't fix it so I just said meh and I frogged it which was really heartbreaking because it does take me a while to do knitting um, and so uh, I had this is my second attempt and I did make it through and so now I'm just working in the round um, it was a much cleaner ribbing and um, I will say that for the first oh I don't know three or four rows of the German short row I was still accidentally using the needles for the ribbing and not, I didn't switch to the body needles. So I think you can notice that. Um, I think you notice it a little bit more on the front side um, here, um, but it is what it is. You live and learn. 
and um, I can definitely see the some of the bumps from the German short row so I don't know what I'm doing wrong when I'm pulling the legs over um, and I'm trying to keep that tight um, but again I know that through time that will kind of help work itself out um, but it's steadily on you know progress so I'm hoping to be done with the raglan increases when I record the next um, podcast episode like I said this yarn is an absolute dream to work with um, no splitting whatsoever it's just it feels so good in your hand like along the needles I use knitters pride um, platina needles and it just like I love how it feels I mean it just it doesn't it keeps it uh, shape it's got good ply to it um there's like no splitting whatsoever um and they're coming back to flock so i'm really excited to see their colorways at flock um and perhaps pick up some more of this yak dk because i and i want to see how it wears um so this is actually my summer flock along um so my goal is to have this done by flock so we're two months out from flock right now so I have two months to finish this I know that once I get to the splitting for the arms it shouldn't be too much longer um, I usually try to set aside like four to five inches a week for the body um, and then the sleeve shouldn't take that long because they're they're short sleeves obviously with the ribbing so I'm really happy with the progress on this and um, learning some new things. Um, the raglan increase, the technique used here is new for me, like doing some yarn overs to get that uh, kind of eyelet hole. I've never done anything that needed a yarn over in knitting. Um, I've done German short rows now, but this is, you know, it's always good to keep doing them so you know. Um, what else was, I think that's so far, those are all my new techniques. Oh, I did, I learned the uh, long tail cast on for this. That's actually why I have that much. <laughs> I have so much. Um, the first time around, I didn't have that much. I had, you know, an appropriate tail length. And now I have quite a bit uh, from my long tail cast on. I did this in case I needed this in the future um for some reason uh because i'm pretty close to the yarn estimates i did swatch for this i i believe i pretty much hit gauge um so i kept with whatever the pattern called when it came to needles um it calls for a three and a half for the ribbing and four for the body so yeah this is the adult playdate tee um, once this is done, I think I might eventually look in my stash and find and make like a three to four year old version for my daughter um, with just some acrylic yarn that I have in my stash. So we'll see how this works up and finishes and then I will go stash diving for my daughter and probably make her one so that we can be matching. So the next thing I want to talk about are two projects that I will be working on next and they're new. I haven't talked about them. Um, I don't, <laughs> I said I wasn't going to do this and then I did it. Um, but I signed up to be a tester for Jen Lovett of Viola Dot Loops for her indecision sweater. Um, it's such a long test period that, and she was missing some larger sizes and I was like, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. But I, wa I wanted to make sure I was stash diving. So the first thing I stash dived to check out and swatch was the Vitalana um, Oasis yarn, which is a alpaca wool blend. Yeah, so 50% alpaca, 25% Peruvial Highland Merino wool, and 25% Surrey alpaca. It says it's a DK weight. I think that's a little generous. I swatched this and I wasn't making gauge. Um, I swatched it on two different um, hooks. I swatched it on a six and a half, which is what the pattern called for. Then I swatched it on an eight, 
um, and I was like an, uh, a stitch short on, on the six and a half. It was a stitch too big on the, no, it was a stitch too much on the six and a half and a stitch too less on the eight. Um, I don't have a seven. It's really hard to come by. Um, I thought about, cause I was like, should I just use this yarn? I have quite a bit of this yarn. I have about 2,700 yards of this. And this pattern's only gonna take about 13 to 1,500 or so yards. And so I was like, then I'll have to find another project to work on this. And so I was like, maybe I'll save this for another project. Plus it's single ply. Um, and I think that might be better just with a regular crochet hook. And I know I had originally intended to do something different with this yarn. So I decided to look to see what else I could swatch up to see that would work. Um, and so I ended up looking at this Lion Brand Respun, which is 100% recycled polyester yarn. Um, and I have several different colors in this. I swatched in the navy and I swatched in this blush. On the eight millimeter Tunisian crochet, I, I hit gauge, so I was like, I'm gonna go with this yarn. Um, and um, so just much like the Indecision Sampler Shawl, it'll be kind of choose your own adventure sweater um, with a base stitch, and then I get to choose the stitches I wanna use throughout. Um, and I have plenty of yarn for this, um, and so it'll be excited to work on. And it's a long test, so I don't have a um, I don't have to rush to get it done. Um, it's not due till the end of September. So I get to kind of, I'm probably going to just break it up each week, kind of like section by section. I don't have the pattern yet. I just had the like, kind of the front matter pages to check gauge and things like that. Um, I should get the pattern in the next week or two. Um, and then I'll be able to start getting this cast on and going. So that will be another project that I have that is technically, it's not a summer make, um, but I think I'll be able to squeeze it in because I'll have the full fade shawl and the August tank coming off. So this will kind of take the testing space in my um, project list, because I generally have about three projects going on at the same time. And this will probably taste, take my testing spot and then my next project after that. Um, I want to talk about just an acquisition and it's an acquisition and that it's not staying in my uh, yarn stash. But I did receive, I saw that Sam from Clockwork Fiber Company was looking for sample makers and she was looking for to make Jen Lovett's uh, influencer sweater which I had, was not part of the testing for that and um but I've obviously tested for several of Jen's um makes and so she was looking for a sample maker um to make a sweater um in her yarn and so she sent she she asked me to do it I you know I signed up and said I'd love to and she picked me and so she sent me several skeins of her yarn and I wanted to show them to you. Um, so it's a colorwork sweater and uh, these are the three skeins. She sent me several of each um, but this is her analog DK. So all three skeins are her analog DK which is 100% untreated American wool. It's a it's a blend of merino and rambouillet sheep. This is DK weight yarn. It's a three ply. There's 240 yards per 100 grams. And this is the colorway beachcomber, which is going to be like the main color. So this is color A in the pattern. And again, I'll put a screenshot up so you can see. It's generally the lighter one um, in a lot of in, in Jen's sample. And then this will be color uh, B, um, and this is the colorway Homestead. And then this is color C, and this is the colorway Cardigan. And so again, these are the three colors together. And so um, 
this will be my first time working with untreated wool. Um, I definitely, for the most part, have superwash um, when it comes to hand dyed yarn in my stash. And so I'll be really kind of interested and really excited to kind of work up and see how it feels, see how it works up and see how it blocks out. Um, and then uh, just to, to, to see it up. So this project will actually be due in the beginning of September. Um, and so I will be working on this for the next two months um, to get her her sample back. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and what's really great is I get to work with a pattern I've not worked with, but a designer I've worked really well with. So I know her writing style. Yeah, it's Tunisian crochet. So that's a given for me. I'm really I really am excited about Tunisian crochet. I do a lot of Tunisian crochet. Um, a, a new indie dyer that I've never kind of tried her yarn before. So I'm really excited to try her yarn. Um, and so it'll be really nice. And I get to make a smaller size than me, so it shouldn't take as long. So I'm normally an extra large in most things and she's having me make a medium full length. And so, it shouldn't take me quite as long as it would take for me to make it for myself. Um, so I'm really excited about that. So I will be making the Influencer Sweater by Jennifer Lovett with yarn from Sam at Clockwork Fiber. That is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw in today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. I uh, try to do regular podcasts about twice a month. Um, I'll do vlogs and check-ins and follow me along at whatever fiber festival I'm at. Um, and so I will be going to flock this year. So I plan to vlog along just like I did last year. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to break that up because I actually got tickets for both days. Um, there are a few yarn dyers that I want to make sure I get their yarn before they sell out. Cause last year, the way I did flock, I did all the filming first squished all the yarn first before I went back and purchased. I also did that because I wanted like the waves to die down because there were lines at tons of things. And so I have to just kind of see how I'm going to do it this year. I did buy a ticket for both days um, for the market way days. Um, I didn't sign up for any of the classes. They just didn't quite call to me this year. But I'm excited just to see what everybody else's feedback is on the classes. It's at a new venue. So super excited. Going to take you along on that vlog. Thank you so much for watching, friends. And I will see you in the next video. Bye now. Bye.